All right, guys, yesterday we had the semifinals. Today we have the finals, and it is Fire Dobby 2 going first against Life Mandalay. Now, this is a really, really unique Mandalay build where Mandalay is using the new foundations, energy suction, and um, All Might's mentorship to not count towards progressive, and then is playing a punch package with repeated smash to also ready their stage. So it de it's definitely a list that ignores progressive and adds two damage to all the punches. All right, Dobby had a bad build turn one, only built three, and is now starting off at the bad guy roundup. Won't get to draw off of it. It's just gonna be a blank three low four. And Dobby didn't even remove cards to make it a three low seven. Following up with the county calorie counter off the block, we saw this quite a bit yesterday. And Mandalay called the right zone. So instead of being a five mid six, it's a five mid four. Let's see if Dobby buffs this one up. Chooses not to, and Mandalay chooses not to block. So I think that was Dobby basically saying, I don't care about the damage here. What I'm really looking for is momentum for capture evildoers for the future. And then Dobby builds two more. So five foundations, it's not the worst, but it uh, could be better for Dobby. But it did get a momentum. Okay, Mandalay starting off with the back alley haymaker. Once again, the camera is inverted a little funky, so it looks like they're playing right to left. Next time I bring my camera to locals, I will get this fixed. But this is the championship of a 12-person provisional store championship. Um, okay, Dobby chooses not to block the back alley haymaker. And Mandalay following up with a setup strike has to commit two to it. Mandalay not playing any foundations here um, to get the um, re Mandalay response to get the plus two to the attacks quite yet. Okay, Dobby is committing Heroic Lineage to the damage bonus to make it a zero speed. And here, and blocks with the Barrier Shield. Doesn't use the Barrier Shield, but blocks with it. Mandalay builds two and passes. Thinking about taking the momentum, thought about it, decided not to, to respect the Capture Evildoers play from Dobby. Sometimes that's the right decision. Sometimes it's the right decision to take the momentum. It's always a hard gamble. Okay, especially since Dobby already had a momentum, I think I probably would have taken it. Okay, Twisting Azure Inferno, we're gonna make it big so that we can make the checks, so that we can make our checks good and our rival's checks bad. Mandalay does have some pretty good defense on board with having a release ready and a passing the torch. Adorable Telepath, to be honest, I can hardly remember what it does. I think it says add this card to your hand, it gets minus two speed. Something like that. Okay, so we full blocked. Now Rapid Punches comes in. It's going to be five low for four, which means that Mandalay did not call the right zone because Mandalay calls a zone and then it gets minus two damage if it's that zone or plus two damage if it's um, their turn. Okay, taking the damage from the Rapid Punches. Let's see if a card pool clear comes in. No card pool clear, just building out. Did some more damage. Mandalay's down to 16 life. Let's see, latent skill, calling for backup. What else is coming down? A season brawler on a five, check a three. We're gonna, oh, sorry. We check a four because of Twisting Azure. All right, sometimes I forget to keep up with Twisting Azure when I'm watching these, uh, when I'm watching this very quickly back. Pretty good stage though, a heroic lineage and a desperate struggle. This Dobby list is playing um, mainly cards to draw and to fuel the aggression and win by turn three, but it's also playing just enough defense to actually survive until turn three with cards like Desperate Struggle, Barrier Shield, and Twisty Surroundings. Okay, so here we see the Energy Suction, which isn't gonna count towards Progressive, but it does allow us to get the Mandalay response off. So even though we checked a three, on that, the difficulty was only a three. So, wait, we did have to commit something though. Why? It would have been a five on the three and then we checked a three. Maybe we passing the torch to draw and I didn't catch it. Okay, built out a little bit more. We have a release, practical studies, someone's style, two releases. 
And Dobby just took the damage, it looks like. Went down to eight. Okay, we're starting off with a stun grenade. We're not going to get, you know, a big benefit from the stun ability, but we will get a benefit from getting to hopefully find another attack. I'm not quite keeping up with this as well as I was yesterday. I feel like I'm missing some things. Let's see if he pulls an attack. He does. Gets a bad guy round up. Okay, and Mandalay did take the momentum that time. So Mandalay does have one. Because Dobby has two momentum now. Okay, Mandalay's choosing not to block. Going down to 10 health. Dobby is thinking about what next. Okay, he's going to play the bad guy roundup that he drew off of the stun grenade. Checks a three on it. Has to commit two. And it looks like uh, Mandalay called the right zone. So it's a three low for two right now. Going to remove the three, make it five damage. If Mandalay does not block, it will take them down to five health. And they choose not to block. And a card pool clear coming in. The signature Dobby Tubu, at least on fire. Interesting to me that, oh, and a stun grenade. You know, this is a really, really strong defensive position for Mandalay. But now it's not going to be because stun grenade says stun three. Looks like Mandalay is responding with someone with style to take the speed down to zero, which means Mandalay will be blocking this attack. Um, but, you know, it, it seemed like Mandalay was in a really strong position, but all it takes is one or two stun grenades, and the defense that felt so powerful all of a sudden becomes not that. Because Mandalay can't afford to take any attacks at this point, being only at five health. And the stun grenade draws another stun grenade. So Mandalay blocks this, but now that other stun grenade is going to come down. And I, it looks like Mandalay called the right zone. So it's only two damage, but then Dobby will make it five damage. Mandalay's now committed out. Yeah, I think this is lethal. I think this is lethal. And we drew another stun grenade. <laughs> But we choose to take the bad guy round up instead. It would have been funny. It would have been funny to get the next stun grenade. But I don't see a world in which Mandalay blocks this. I think this is over. Mandalay had such a strong defensive stage. And two stun grenades that say stun six. And it's gone. The defense is gone. Yeah. Had... Maybe Mandalay survives had they blocked with the... One the um, five percent, the one for all full cowling five percent, on the I think that string started with the bad guy roundup, and so maybe Mandalay survives had they blocked with that. But after the two stun grenades came in and said stun six, there was no way Mandalay could block. It's hard to know at the beginning though because Mandalay's wanting to hold back the attacks to kill Dobby on the next turn. Okay, now we're in a totally different. Um, Totally different match. Mandalay gets to go first, and Dobby went second and had a horrible build. Now we're using All Might's Mentorship into a back alley haymaker. And so if we used the Mandalay response, the back alley haymaker would be on a three because mentorship doesn't count towards progressive for attacks. And then we say stun two, and Dobby is wide open. I wouldn't be surprised if Dobby just dies here, to be honest. And we fail the block. We're already down to 13 health. Mandalay gets to discard one, draw one, right? Or draw one, discard one. I can't remember the order it goes. Checking the three on the setup strike. So we have to commit two. Doesn't feel great. Maybe Dobby does survive now. Something interesting is Dobby built a stopping for breakfast, which stops actions, but I haven't seen any actions in this list. Maybe Dobby is mainboarding one stopping for breakfast and just forgot to sideboard it out. I'm not sure. Did get a full block there. We did get a full block from the bad guy roundup. And so then Mandalay goes foundation into a repeated. The repeated is on an eight, but it's really on a six. Checks a three, has to commit basically out for it, but then using repeated, ready's three. So repeated is just a nuts card. But Dobby got the block off because of Barrier Shield. I totally missed that. He used Barrier Shield, took it to zero, and then blocked with a Cremation. So Dobby actually, on three foundations, gets two full blocks off 
Very, very impressive defense from the Dobby. Yeah, I I, uh, I was focusing on the repeated while Dobby used uh, Barrier Shield, but we saw Barrier Shield play a crucial role in winning the round over May, and now we see Barrier Shield playing a crucial role in this matchup with Mandalay. Dobby choosing to build, getting to six foundations, keeping four in hand, has some defense now with an ice gliding and heroic lineage, but it's just a matter of is Dobby going to see another turn? And Dobby hasn't done any damage, doesn't have a momentum for a card pool clear, so Dobby's probably going to need two more turns. We shall see. Of course, they could always just get a momentum with a spear and shield or something like that. Now, Mandalay is starting out with the Muscle Mauler. Blocking with the Spear and Shield. Okay. So we are going to get a momentum. So Dobby does have a chance of winning the game if it makes it back to their turn. Following up with an Energy Suction won't count towards Progressive, but does get the Mandalay response off. So now this is on a 4 and checks a... Or I think it's on a 3. And checks a 5. No momentum to build down. Blocking with a twisting. And we have to, we check a three, so we have to commit a lot of resources to this block. Blocking with a twisting is just feels really bad as Dobby too, because that's the main card you need to win the game on your next turn. So then Mandalay going release into a one for all full cowling. Checks a five, but the full cowling was only on a five, six, seven, eight, minus two on a six. So we only have to commit one for it. Again, this Mandalay really doesn't play on progressive. It's going to be a four high for eight, I believe, right now because of Mandalay. And so Dobby going all the way down to two. Does Mandalay have another attack is the question, and can they pass it? Check the three, but still pass it because it's on a five, six, seven, eight, nine. Check the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. And Dobby shows the two calorie counters and uh, we'll take the L. So now we are on to game three. Dobby, once again, not having a good turn one build. Firestarter, calling for backup, quick to act. Mandalay with a decent build, excited for blood, summon with style, floating, and um, I can't tell what that other card is. Is that a tight left? Looks like a tight left. Okay, Dobby going with the Twisting Azure, a solid start. Calling for backup. Removing the three. Make it a four mid seven. Now we're gonna do the checks thing. And Mandalay says that's good, I'll take it. Check the three on the rapid punches, but it's really a four because Twisting Azure is not fair. <laughs> this becomes five low seven. Mandalay blocks with a one low block, but checks a three, so has to commit their entire stage. So now if Dobby has another attack, does he, though, do they risk it? They do not. They're going to build a twisty surroundings and an ice gliding. And that's it. So Dobby's only on four foundations after two turns. The twisty is going to really help Dobby survive this next turn, but it feels like Dobby's going to need to build a little more to actually find lethal. Okay, we're going mentorship into a rejuvenating smash. How sick is that? So the Rejuvenating Smash comes in on a 4. No, sorry, it comes in on a 3, but then Dobby used Twisty Surroundings to make it a 1, because even though they checked a 3 and it was on a 3, the Twisty Surroundings makes it a 1, so Mandalay had to commit 2 for it. But that's a pretty cool line, um, Mentorship into a Rejuvenating. And once again, a Spear and Shield block to grab another momentum. I think Dobby has one momentum right now. All right, we've got a foundation coming down, so we know that an attack is next. And it's a back alley haymaker on a 5, 6, 7, but it's really on a 5. So they check a 5, and it's all good. And a block. Fail the block. Uh, 
failing to block with the capture evil doers. I suppose Dobby can always just go pick up the capture evil doers if they draw any action, but it still feels bad. Dobby's not in a good position here. Like, if Mandalay wanted to, they could they could win the game, but they just don't have enough foundations to do it. I see a repeated smash. Yeah, in Mandalay's hands, there's definitely a repeated smash. So the twisty surroundings, I think, saved Dobby's life. Because if Mandalay didn't have to commit two more foundations, they could have done a repeated smash, readied their board, and then played another attack after that, and I'm pretty sure it would have been game. So I think twisty surroundings saved Dobby. Dobby deciding, am I going to be aggressive? Because it certainly looks like Mandalay's hand... Is <laughs> To me, it looks like there's at least three attacks in there. Um, I see like a rejuvenating, like a one for all. So Dobby is deciding, am I going to attack and go for it? Or am I going to just build? And it looks like the Dobby has decided to attack and go for it on four foundations. It's going to be hard to chew through all that health total though, especially when Mandalay is adding minus two damage to a lot of things. And a full block. Stun Grenade coming down. Won't be a huge stun because there's been no card pool clear, so it'll just be stun one. But let's see what the Stun Grenade can pick up. And it picks up another Stun Grenade. <laughs> which, if Dobby gets a Capture Evil Doers, is going to make a stun three coming in, which pretty much takes down all of Mandalay's defense. So Mandalay blocks, right? Because this is basically the last chance to block before the Stun Grenade. Yep, Capture Evil Doers comes. Here comes the card pool clear. I imagine the stun grenade comes next. Take down Mandalay's last foundation. Mandalay had basically has no hope of blocking. Check a three on it. We haven't played a twisting azure, so that's actually a three. And the stun grenade picks up a rapid punches. Feels nice because the rapid can then draw because Mandalay is definitely not blocking anymore. So now the question is on three ready foundations, can Dobby do 26 damage when Mandalay's... Oh, grabs another Capture Evil Doers. Dobby, red alert. Dobby just grabbed a second Capture Evil Doers and another Stun Grenade. <laughs> All right, we have just seen three Stun Grenades in a row. I mean, there's nothing left to stun. Okay, the Stun Grenade blanks on picking up another attack. But wow. You know, in game one, we saw the Stun Grenades totally break down Mandalay's wall and another card pool clear because we saw the capture evil doers come in. So now Dobby has played four attacks and checked one. Dobby has now played four attacks and committed one foundation and has a clear card pool. That's the power of capture evil doers. That card is not fair. But we have a lot of not fair cards. You know, on Mandalay's side, repeated 100% smash is not fair. We're going to make it big. Looks like Mandalay did call the correct zone, so it's only going to be five damage. Mandalay's down to nine. It's going to take at least two more attacks. Bad guy roundup. And Mandalay called the right zone again. Down to two damage. It's just a question of can Dobby find the damage here. So it's going to go up to five. That'll take the Mandalay down to four health. And so Dobby needs one more attack. Does Dobby? Yep. I forgot. We had, we had the stun grenade in hand. And this should do it. Even if Mandalay called the right zone, this should do it. Let's see. We're going to make it seven damage. Mandalay shows their hand. Two repeated 100% smashes. Mandalay was holding on to two repeated 100% smashes. So Dobby was 100% dead. Had had this gone to the next turn. Oh, and we're doing cremation just to make sure. We're just going to make the, you know, we're giving another three speed just to make sure. That brings us to the end. So, holy cow, guys. We just watched Dobby 2 play seven attacks and commit two foundations. Seven attacks. Every single one gets three damage. Two foundations. That's, that's, what can you do? What can you do? You know, Mandalay was in a, an amazing position. Mandalay, two two repeated 100% smashes and I think a rejuvenating in their hand. So the game was over if it got to Mandalay's turn because Dobby was only at nine health and um, would only have had two foundations to block. The game was over. But Dobby, well, first of all, it helps 
checked a few threes, but they were when the card pool was clear, so it didn't hurt, you know. And then um, I think checked only one three in that hole. So checked six fives and one three, if I remember correctly. And um, only had to commit two foundations to play seven attacks. That's just nuts. That's nuts. So if you want to know why, like, Asui has not topped a region... Sorry, why Asui has not topped a regional this year? It's because she's a very, very strong character because, you know, she's saying, I get to ignore progressive difficulty. But look at this. Who is playing on progressive difficulty right now? Dobby is certainly not playing on progressive difficulty, getting to pick up capture evildoers, get free momentum with cremation and spear and shield. So it's not even hard to turn on capture evildoers. Um, and then let's look at the Mandalay side. We got repeated 100% smashes. We're getting plus two to our, our check, and we're playing these foundations that don't, don't count towards progressive. So if you want to know why Asui is not doing that strong right now, it's because she doesn't add damage to her attacks. And she ignores progressive difficulty. So what? Nobody plays on progressive right now. If your deck is playing on progressive, you're doing it wrong because nobody else's is. It's just, you know, progressive difficulty is not real. And uh, and we just saw it. We just saw it. W two played seven attacks, committed two foundations. What can you do? <laughs> just what a game! What a game! You know, it really all came down to um, to capture evil doers, and then I imagine uh, all the stun grenades didn't blink until the last one. I imagine like the rapid and maybe the bad guy roundup helped draw a uh, few attacks so it really came down to dobby found seven attacks dobby found two capture evil doers dobby plays them all and gives everything three damage and mandalay was even guessing the zone right a lot of the time so that was probably like almost 40 you know dobby did probably almost 40 points of damage across the turn maybe that's an exaggeration maybe it's like 35 it felt like mandalay was always guessing it right just what can you do what can you do what a match that was awesome um, Dobby recovers from a bad build on turn one and uh, and takes the win. So congratulations to Dobby 2. Um, Dobby 2 is actually my brother. <laughs> and uh, we had practiced uh, quite a bit before this store championship. And uh, we played, let's see, the, the few days before we played five matches and I played my Shigaraki 3 and he played Dobby 2 and he beat me four out of five matches. And uh, it... It didn't feel fair then, and watching the championship now here, it still doesn't feel fair. Congratulations to my brother. Takes it down with the aggression of Dobby too. And if Capture Evildoers doesn't get banned in the meta, then Dobby too could be a thing, folks. He could be. He could be a thing. All right. I will see you guys later. I am going on a um, short vacation this weekend, so I am not sure if I'm going to be making content, but I might. I might find time to make a video tomorrow. We, we'll see.